the Lord brought this episode with my husband uh, and told me that I need to share this, this testimony. My husband had, he was getting ready to go out and he shaved, walked across the room and sat down and he was gone. And his eyes were fixed wide open. His head was down. And his mouth was dropped open like his. And no breath. You knew he was gone. It was so obvious. So I ran outside to about two. Uh, trailers down. And I yelled as I was running. Does anybody know CPR? I think my husband had a heart attack. And suddenly the Lord stopped me and said, go back. I'm bringing him back. And I did. And as he was wake, waking up, coming out of it, it was like in two minutes the paramedics were there. They took me aside and they said, we know it's his heart. We know that it stopped. But we don't know why. And we're taking him to Cleveland Clinic at the emergency room. And he has no idea. We won't tell him it's his heart, so don't you say anything. All he knows is he's coming out of it right now. So we were there for about a week. And... The, he had five doctors examine him. And they had a consultation with him after about a week. I mean, you know, neurologist, cardiologist, uh, internal medicine specialist, uh, doing everything they can to find out why this happened. And they said to him, "Your all the tests we took, there is no reason why your heart should have stopped. None whatsoever. I mean, you had a little bit of blockage, like a lot of people do, but it was not enough to stop your heart. And what happened to you is you died and came back. Your heart completely stopped, and then you came back. And I asked them, well, if that ever happens again, because they, they said they didn't have any guarantee it wouldn't. Uh, I said, what do I do? And they said, what did you do the first time? I said, well, I immediately prayed. And uh, called, you know, somebody for medics. And they said, well, then you're going to have to do that the next time. Just do the same thing. Let's pray, really. So, we had just bought a boat. And that boat was never in the water but one time. It was bought for a woman who uh, never really got into that boat. And so the boat was like brand new, and we had just bought it. But the woman, she died before she could get into that boat. And the Lord told me to go to the boat and break every curse off of that boat. Because people are talking and believing that the boat holds some kind of curse, that anybody who buys it, they would die. The way she did, they would never get to go in it, which would have been exactly what happened to them. This taught me about curses on things and on, on cars, on, on houses, uh, and how that when you buy things, you just, you rebuke every curse and break them. Anyway, I, uh, 
I witnessed when I was out there in Goodland, uh, we lived, you know, stayed on, in a camper on the water. And people from all over the world came through there. I talked to people from Argentina, Brazil, uh, Germany, Australia. And I witnessed there from the time I got up in the morning till the time I went to bed at night. And my husband used to watch me out the window. And he would say to me, Marion, how do you do that? He says, within two minutes, you have these people talking to you about God. And some of them don't even speak English and they understand every word you're saying. How do you do that? Well, you know, of course, it, <laughs> I told them it was just the Lord. It wasn't me. It was the Holy Spirit. It had nothing to do with me. But he was right. Those people understood exactly what I was talking about. And uh, anyway, so the next day, I was up on, on, on the road witnessing when suddenly the Lord said to me, go home right now, go home. So I went home quickly because I didn't know what was happening after what happened the day before. And he was sitting there in a chair and he was holding a newspaper like this. But the newspaper, he had it gripped so tight. And so I knew he was afraid. And I knew something was warning him that the same thing happened. Well, he told me just before this happened, he got dizzy. He got dizzy again. And he was gripping onto that paper. And there was a, in Jackson, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, there was a, a healing service from a very famous preacher was going to be there. And, uh, and I told my husband, my friend next door wanted to go. And I said, look, I know you don't have enough faith to help yourself right now, but I'm going to go and uh, pray for you. And we went there. And when we got there, we stood in line out of maybe 20 some thousand people. And we waited from seven o'clock in the morning uh, for the first service and the man never came out. And they said he was, that was the first time he had ever missed a service. So we had to like go around that whole crowd and go stand in line again so that we wouldn't miss the seven o'clock evening service. And how I got a seat was way up in the, up there. I mean, it was really high. And he came out and he had said about having a heart problem. And what he was describing as a heart problem was exactly what happened to my daughter. I mean, to my husband. And the Lord told me, get down there. And I said, Lord, I'm so exhausted haven't had anything to eat. I might faint. What What am I going to do? And God says, just go down there. And I did. When I finally got all the way down there, there was a line of wheelchairs and people that were crippled waiting first. And that means I had to go all the way back to the back of the line, which I did. And I stood there and I prayed and I said, Lord, I don't know how I'll be, long I'll be able to stand here. And immediately, as soon as I said that to the Lord, the man said, all of you with the heart problem he described, come forward. Well, I was standing proxy for my husband. So he had that problem and I went and came forward. And uh, I mean, he was just real close to me. And he prayed and I knew that my husband was healed that it was never going to happen to him again. So I went back home and of course my husband wouldn't believe me. And we had that boat and we were to go out fishing and he, he, he wouldn't go. And I had heard stories of people having that kind of episode with their heart become so frightened 
that they wouldn't leave the living room chair. They wouldn't go to the store. They wouldn't, they wouldn't go to work. They wouldn't. One man, they said in particular, lost his home, lost everything because he was too frightened to even go to work because his heart had stopped at one time and he died and came back. So I told my husband, I said, look, I had prayer for you and I know that you're healed. So I'm telling you that if you would come on the boat and go fishing with me and believe God that nothing's going to happen to you, that you would agree with me and believe God that you are going to be fine. That he said, the Lord told me to tell you that when you go out on that boat, that you're, you're going to forget it ever happened. So much so that you'll be able to go fishing and do everything you want. Well, finally, I talked him into it, and we went on that boat, and we went fishing. I mean, we enjoyed the dolphins playing, and we enjoyed so much. He completely forgot what happened to him. And he enjoyed the fishing so much that when we came back home, he never mentioned what happened to him again out of fear. But I had another problem. During the time that we, that he was in the hospital, my insurance company calls me up and says that we owed them like $250,000 for the bill and, and that the insurance company was not going to pay it. And no, it was the hospital called and said the insurance company won't pay it. And so what I did was is I called the insurance company. And I told them, I said, according to our contract, in our insurance, if it's life-threatening, you must pay that bill. And the woman argued, and she says, oh, no, it wasn't life-threatening. There is just no way we are going to pay that because it wasn't life-threatening. And I said, look, you go back into the record of what happened that day. And I guarantee you what you will see is the doctor says he died and came back. And that is life threatening. So you have to pay this bill. Well, she came back and she said, sure enough, that's exactly what they said. They said he died and came back. Now, this was probably... Hmm, like in 1999. That's how many years ago this was. It's never happened to him again. I mean, he's gotten dizzy a couple of times and his heart rate dropped low, but it never stopped. I don't know why I'm giving you this testimony. I don't, I do know that some people misunderstand when I say, uh, you know, you need to learn how to pray for your own body, for your own family alone. They misunderstand and think I'm saying, don't ever, don't ever go to anybody else for prayer. That's not true. I said, when God tells you to, calls you to have an agreement with somebody, do it then. But to run to them first? No, that's not what God wants. God doesn't want you running to everybody else. Oh, I need an agreement. I need to. That is almost sheer laziness of not wanting to handle it yourself. Just like the woman that called me about having demonic problems. Not wanting to fight it yourself. I've been there many, many times where something really bad would try and come on me. And I would rather call somebody else to have them rebuke it with me because I know that what I would fight would take me a while to get it done. And so I would rather run to somebody because it could happen like that with two or three people. And the Lord said, no, don't do it. Learn to do it by yourself. And then if I needed help, call someone else. Well, with the situation with my husband, I had no one else. There was no one else with us. I couldn't run to anybody and say, would you please pray? 
uh, my telephone didn't work right in the camera. So I, I couldn't do anything except trust in God. Now, understand, where would my husband have been if I did not know how to trust in God for his body? Where would we have been if I did not know how to hear God's voice? Where would I have been if I did not know how to hear him to go to that healing uh, ministry? What would have happened if I would have been disobedient and said, well, I don't need anybody when God's calling me? You know, even this video, uh, when I was laying there in bed, I heard a knock at the door. Now, I knew it was, it was a heavenly knock. I knew that it was God talking. Because many, many times I hear a knock, and that means God's calling me to something. So I get up out of bed, and he either takes me into intercessory prayer, or he takes me into a message, or he takes me into a vi video. It's always him, always. I don't get any sleep. I don't get, sometimes I don't go to bed till 6 o'clock in the morning, which is 6 o'clock now. And I laid there for an hour or so and couldn't sleep. Because God wanted me to make this video. I don't know who needs it. But I do know that people need to understand that if you're close enough to God, you can hear his voice to do these things. So, and that was a matter of life and death, and it was very, very traumatic. I mean, just imagine yourself just suddenly coming to the place where your your husband, his heart stops right in front of you. And, and his eyes are fixed, and his mouth dropped open, and there's no breath whatsoever. How and what could happen if I didn't know to hear his voice to say, go back, I'm bringing him back. There are certain things that God can train you in, that you can be ready at all times for every situation and every need. Let him, let him talk to you. Let him get close to you. That, and it's not to puff yourself up. You, you think I sit here and I think I'm better than all of you? You'd be so wrong. Because I know what I came out of. I know that I had a hundred million times the problems that you yourself have. And I'm sitting there and looking at many of you and knowing that God tells me that you have a sound mind. You didn't have to go through what I went through. That you didn't have all of those things from your background that I had to go through. And how much easier it is for you to go before God and to hear his voice than it ever was for me much easier it would be for you to overcome all of these things. All you have to do is be obedient. All you have to do, you have, I didn't even have someone to tell me that. I didn't have anybody to talk to me but Jesus. But he has his mercy so great upon you that he sent me and raised me to do this. Like I said, my first group of women, they would walk in there, and it was only four of them, and they would sit down with their tablets and their pencils, and they would pray this, Lord, we know that this woman is not meant for just us, that one day you are going to use her for a lot of people. But we want to thank you today that you loved us enough to send her to us. They understood that it was his love for them that used me for them, not me. They didn't give me the credit. They talked to him. It was your love for them. So I'm telling you, it's God's love for you that sends me with these testimonies to help you, to bring you to the place that you need to be.